The ones that very that likely work are vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 MK7. Um, at an efficacious dose, a lot of companies um, do not have high enough dose. Yep. What about supplements? Everyone wants to take a pill that's going to help them achieve their goals. And there's a dozens and dozens of bone building supplements out there. So we looked at some of those ingredients, which ones work and which ones had more mystique to them. The ones that very that likely work are vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, MK7. Um, at an efficacious dose, a lot of companies um, do not have high enough dose. Um, vitamin D, I'd say a high enough dose is to bump your vitamin D up, which for a lot of people is 5,000 or even 10,000, especially if it's not in a soft gel and if you're not consuming it with fat. And then uh, for vitamin K2, it's likely at least 100 micrograms, but probably significantly more than that it is an optimal dose in most people, especially if they're on a statin, which can deplete vitamin K2. So those are the first two. Another one that has um, been hotly debated among the functional medicine community is strontium. And strontium will definitely improve your DEXA scans. Uh, it's questionable whether it's going to reduce fracture risk. That's going to be dose dependent. And mm. uh, strontium is really in this sort of interesting category where it is both a supplement and a medication. Uh, yep. It's actually being prescribed again in the UK, or at least they have the ability to prescribe it again. I think that yep. was late 2010s that that came back into being uh, able to be prescribed for patients. Yep. And then here in the United States, it's very common for strontium citrate at a lower milligram dose. I mean, typically you're looking at 2000 milligrams of the strontium ranolate versus 680 plus or minus of the citrate. Um, mm -hmm. to be used for the same purpose, to improve bone mineral density. Uh, and this is kind of a confounder if you're looking at someone's overall bone density. You'll definitely see an improvement there, but you'll see an improvement regardless of whether or not they are resistance training, getting adequate vitamin D, calcium. So it can make it look like things are improving much more rapidly. Yep. And I would worry about someone just taking that pill over the person who is doing the resistance training, like the lift more trial. Yeah, um, you don't want to trick your doctor into thinking you have better bone density than you actually do. <laughs> it's just like you don't want to trick your doctor into thinking that you have a much lower A1C that you actually do if there's a chance that it's pathologic. We went down a pretty solid rabbit hole here. And there's a lot of claims about strontium, and we like to validate or invalidate those claims. People know we have a, a very open mind, and um, we like to look into things. And we've seen claims by companies that happen to make strontium citrate that says um, strontium citrate is going to um, be just as effective, if not more effective than strontium ranolate. And that just didn't appear to be true because when you clicked on their link, it popped up and uh, the literature article did not cite that whatsoever. Yeah, this blog, which can always be a red flag if you're looking at the validity of like something I read online and you know people who are doing their research, be very cautious of blogs. Um, they said strontium is the only trace mineral present in human bone whose level in bone correlates with bone compressive strength. And you click the link to their citation and that citation mentions nothing about, nothing of the sort, nothing about the strength in strontium, no correlation. Um, so they essentially just made this up and put a placeholder citation in there thinking, Oh, people aren't going to click through this or, or maybe chat GPT wrote this in this day and age. Who knows? Yeah, it could have been. Um, either way, that was disconcerting to see. Um, strontium does have some good data. For example, um, in uh, human made bone concrete formulations, it definitely has potential applicability. And uh, it also has potential applicability in a situation where Someone gets a DEXA scan, they've already been tracking their DEXA scan for a while, so they know, is my bone density, density stable? 
Um, is my bone, am I losing bone density? If so, at what rate am I losing bone density? And then they can add them in. Um, and that way the strong team is not masking any other effect. Yeah, because you could lose, you know, say you lose 4% bone density in your lumbar spine in one year in actual density, but you're taking strontium because those are heavier, you're going to see in the DEXA scan that your bone density appears to have stabilized. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to let your healthcare provider know that you're taking strontium. Um, and if they are not aware, let them know that you are, you know, this is likely to affect a DEXA scan because not everyone is aware of this. Certainly nothing that was in my education in uh, my nurse practitioner program, but something that I came across that, hey, this can falsely elevate the DEXA. That being said, it does seem to improve bone density and probably reduces fracture risk if we extrapolate from the ranolate studies. Yeah. But you can't say that just because it's citrate and not ranolate that you get all the benefit and none of the side effects. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a pretty good review here, um, that just kind of summarizes, says, there is no evidence to, to suggest that the ranolate has any different or more beneficial effects on bone than any other strontium salt. So essentially, I, I would suspect same benefits, same risk. So definitely yep. be cautious if someone has cardiovascular disease um, or someone is at high risk for having a cardiovascular event. Speaking of that, we also looked into that and it didn't appear to be a definitive uh, mechanism of action causation link. Perhaps it's because strontium often displaces calcium and of course calcium and its action on calcium channels in the heart is important for um, the electrical conducting system of the heart. So perhaps it's not related to plaque buildup or um, strontium amyloidosis, just like you have amyloidosis. <laughs> Perhaps it's not related to those mechanisms, but it could also be multiple mechanisms. Could be Occam's razor, could be Hickam's dictum. Yeah, we really don't know the mechanism there. It hasn't been clearly elucidated, um, but those were seen in some of the RCTs. Observational data has had mixed results. So you definitely want to use caution when there's the unknown there because we want to do no harm. Um, so only there was a complementary treatment that would decrease risk of cardiac events. Hmm. Still the number one killer. We must not have one. <laughs> for, for those who don't know, that would be HRT. That'd be estrogen replacement. Looking at strontium ranolate, its effects on bone density, and then a three patient case report or case series, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, we'll look at the comparison there. Uh, strontium ranolate taken for three years consistently, increased mineral density in the lumbar spine. 14.4%, um, I believe, in lumbar spine, and then either femur or total body, 8.3%. This was a New England Journal of Medicine study. 14.4% lumbar spine, and then 8.3% at the femoral neck. Okay, perfect. There we go. And then if we compare that to people who were taking you know, about a third of the milligram dose um, in strontium citrate form, so you have patient one, uh, total hip bone mineral density increased 2.7% the first two years. And this was after stopping alendronate, another medication we'll talk about, mm -hmm. um, and continue to increase up to 9.2% above baseline after six years of treatment. So Pretty impressive result. This would certainly fool some people if they didn't know the patient was taking this and they just saw the DEXAs and they go, wow, this looks great. Patient number two, an increase of 4.3% at the lumbar spine, 7.6% total hip within one year. At five years, 6.5% lumbar spine, 12% total hip. Uh, Stop the strontium, one year after stropping, lost 9.1% lumbar spine and 42 at the hip. So the effects on bone mineral density you know, fluctuate very rapidly um, in no normal physiologic state, even of very low estradiol levels without confounders like hyperthyroid or hyperparathyroidism. Mm -hmm. Is someone going to lose 9% of their lumbar spine bone density in one year? So if you saw this, you'd kind of scratch your head and think, oh, you know, something's up here. Um, you know, maybe it was a different machine or in this case, it was certainly the patient, 
supplementing with the strontium and then withdrawing that supplementation. Yeah, the, the third patient saw a pretty similar increase, 10% lumbar spine, 4.3% hip, and then uh, after stopping, again, uh, the bone mineral density decreased, uh, essentially losing the progress and a bit more, 14% and 6%. Yeah, so I think the way that I will incorporate this into my practice is making sure I have at least a year, you know, say DEXA January, DEXA next January. What's our rate of bone loss? Have we stabilized that? Have we done everything we can? And then you know, if the patient is low cardiovascular risk, strontium could be reasonable, um, especially if someone doesn't have extremely low bone density, if they're mildly osteopenic or not even osteopenic. Um, if they are truly osteoporotic, then there are probably better treatments. Other things that I would refer out to, to a specialist who's going to yep. administer these usually monoclonal antibodies would be the standard of care now, uh, or best treatments if payers cover. Yeah. And as we mentioned, your bone is like the, both your bone and your muscle really are the 401ks of your health span. They're going to allow you to have the best chance to have a high quality of life very late into life. But for example, at age 100, uh, people who have high qualities of life often have excellent bone mineral density and lean body mass as well. Mm -hmm.